and today we'll be talking about endometriosis. So let's talk about what is endometriosis. So the endometrium is the inside lining of your uterus. Okay, these cells are present, supposed to be present only inside the uterus and they respond to the hormones that are produced in your ovary, namely estrogen and progesterone. So in the first half of your cycle, those cells will thicken up and then if you don't conceive, then they start to bleed and they bleed out through the cervix, through the vagina and that's your period. When you have endometriosis, those cells are present elsewhere besides inside the uterus. So they can be present inside the muscle of the uterus and that's called adenomyosis or they can be present anywhere in your body. Most commonly they're present behind the uterus in the pelvis, on the ovaries or on the bladder or the intestines which are closely related to the uterus. Sometimes however they are present in the eye, in the lung or on the diaphragm, they can really be present anywhere. We think the cause of endometriosis is genetic. So we think that you are born with the predisposition of having those cells implanted in the wrong spot. And those cells will then bleed every month where they're not supposed to. We also think that there is a role um, for the immune system in the presence of endometriosis. So we think that people who suffer from endometriosis have an immune system that is overactive and so the immune system gets very easily irritated by these cells that are bleeding every month. So how is endometriosis diagnosed? It's quite a tricky one. Most women have a delay of 7 to 10 years before they are diagnosed with endometriosis. And that's because of two things. Number one is this idea that it's normal to have really painful, horrible periods. And that's really not the case. Women and young girls should never be kept home from school or home from work because they have such severe pain during their period. That's the first sign that you've got endometriosis. The second reason why the diagnosis is often delayed is because it's misinterpreted as irritable bowel syndrome. So sometimes you can be bounced around from your GP to the gastroenterologist and only end up at the gynecologist as the last resort. So in the past, it was necessary to diagnose endometriosis by doing an operation called a laparoscopy, where we could actually see the endometriosis with our eyes. However, nowadays we are able to diagnose it based on your history, so based on a history of severe period pains from when they started, when you were a girl, um, as well as painful intercourse, painful urination during your period, painful defecation during your period. Um, and then we can also see it on sonar sometimes. It's difficult to see stage 1 or 2 disease on sonar, but stage 3 and 4, where you have cysts in your ovaries and everything seems very stuck together, is quite easy to diagnose on an ultrasound. What are the symptoms of endometriosis? The first one is severe period pain. So. It's normal to have some period pain on day one or two of your period, but it should go away thereafter. Having severe cramps prior to your period, throughout your period, or throughout the month is not normal and can be a sign that you have endometriosis. The pain can also be associated with headaches or migraines, as well as anxiety and bloating prior to or during your period. Endometriosis is a systemic disease. It affects your whole body. It's not just period pain. It's the headaches, it's the anxiety, it's the bloating, it's the terrible fear that your period is coming 
and it's very, very debilitating. The thing that causes this is this chronic inflammation. So those cells that are present in your pelvis or wherever they are, can they bleed every month and that bleeding is not normal. And your body recognizes, oh, there's a problem and it sends your immune system to go and sort the problem out. And it thinks it's helping, but actually it's just making your whole body irritable and inflamed. And that's what causes that bloating and that's what causes all that pain. So your body thinks it's helping, but really it's just making it more uncomfortable for you. And long term, this causes things to become really stuck together and that can cause even more pain. So there's a lot of information out there about the optimum diet for a patient with endometriosis. The evidence is lacking. So the only definite evidence that we have says that alcohol, red meat, and trans fatty acids may worsen endometriosis and that omega-3 that you get from fish oil and B12, so vitamin B12, are beneficial in improving the symptoms of endometriosis. So basically a Mediterranean diet or a diet that is well balanced with leaner meats, less alcohol and less fatty foods may benefit your endometriosis symptoms. So how do we treat endometriosis? We use a stepwise approach and the first step is usually taken by the patient on their own and it comes in the form of pain management, specifically non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, something like ibuprofen or my pain, gen pain. And these painkillers you would usually start about two days before your period when you start to feel that crampy feeling or your back, any back pain. And it takes the age off, but it doesn't solve the problem. So the next step is you go to your GP and they suggest putting you on a combined oral contraceptive. Usually this does help a little. And it decreases the flow of your menstruation and it may decrease the number of days that you're bleeding for. It can help with the pain. And for some people, this is enough. But for many, it isn't. And that's when you get referred to me. So the next step would be to try you on something called Dinogest, commonly known as the Zan. It is a progesterone only pill that will stop your period. And by stopping your period, it also stops those cells that are outside of the uterus from bleeding. No bleeding means that your body isn't trying to fight that bleeding and therefore your inflammation decreases and those active areas of endometriosis become inactive and your pain will improve. Unfortunately, the Zan can't be used long term due to a side effect of osteoporosis. So it thins out the density in your bones long term. So it's more of a short term solution. The next step would be to put in a Mirena. A Mirena is an intrauterine device that contains the same progesterone, but it acts locally. And what it does is it also stops your period, which is not unhealthy for you. It's perfectly safe and won't affect your future fertility. In fact, it will help it. So what the Mirena does is it keeps you from having your period. And again, therefore, those cells that are outside the uterus will not be bleeding and will not be causing you any problems. And this can be used as a long-term solution until you're ready to have children or if you've completed your family, can be used long-term. Alternatively, we can look at doing surgery for you. So surgery, we try to avoid in very young patients and in patients who are still desiring fertility because by operating on the ovaries, we can remove some of those precious eggs that um, we need to have babies. So we try to avoid operating unless you've completed your family. An operation is done laparoscopically, so that's through keyhole surgery. We make a couple of little incisions in your tummy, we put a camera inside, and then we go and we remove all the little areas of endometriosis that we can see. And that can, can really, really help your symptoms. Surgery can be quite complicated if you have severe disease, stage 3 or stage 4, and that, that those endometriosis 
um, nodules can invade your bladder and can invade your rectum and we may need to involve urologists and surgeons to assist us with surgeries like that. I often get asked, does pregnancy cure endometriosis? So, bit of a tricky answer. So pregnancy is nine months of not having your period. So you can imagine that that is beneficial in the um, background of endometriosis because those cells that are outside of your uterus that would have been bleeding are no longer bleeding. So yes, your endometriosis can be improved and often can be cured. So patients who may have needed fertility treatment to fall pregnant with their first child can conceive spontaneously after a pregnancy because those endometriosis lesions have been inactive for a long period of time. But we can't guarantee that a pregnancy will definitely cure your endometriosis and it may recur in five years time. So it is important to remain on contraception after a pregnancy to prevent any further endometriosis forming. So in conclusion, endometriosis can be an awful diagnosis associated with a lot of pain and discomfort. But the good news is that we can diagnose it rather easily and that there are many management options. So come in and let's see how we can help.